Sonos has a fantastic lineup of soundbars right now with the compact Sonos Ray, Sonos Beam Gen 2, and premium Sonos Arc. And no matter which one you decide to go for, you're guaranteed an upgrade for your TV, music, and gaming experiences. But there's always room for improvement. So we've put together our top 10 Sonos soundbar tips and tricks to help make sure you're getting the most out of your Sonos soundbar, whether you've had it for a while now, or if it's a brand new addition to your home. Right, let's kick off with Sonos's room calibration software, TruePlay TuneIn. It's by far the quickest and most affordable way to give your Sonos soundbar an instant boost. Now, admittedly, this isn't necessarily a hidden feature, but many users opt to skip going through the entire process in a bid to save some time during setup. Now, a quick disclaimer here, this feature is only available on iOS devices. However, if you use Android, you can just use a friend's iOS device to run TruePlay as it only needs to be done once. So you guys join me in our Sonos Arc Lounge. And before we get into actually true playing using the Sonos app, the first thing we need to do is make sure that we've got all of our Sonos speakers positioned exactly where we want them. So we've got the Sonos Arc, as you can see, wall mounted underneath our TV. At the back by the sofa, we've got two Sonos ones as rears facing just ever so slightly inwards. And then down here in the bottom corner, we've got our Sonos Sub Gen 3. So we've got all of our Sonos speakers positioned where we want them. So now we're gonna go onto the app and I'm gonna run TruePlay. So the first thing we need to do is obviously open up the Sonos app and then we wanna head down to settings in the bottom right hand corner. Now you wanna to navigate to the section that says system. And now obviously in the showroom, we've got a number of different Sonos setups. So we just need to scroll down to find the one that we are using. So it's the Sonos Arc white here. So with the rears and the sub. So we're gonna click on that. And then we're gonna scroll down until we find the heading that says sound. And just underneath that, you'll find an option for true play. So we're gonna hit that. And then we're gonna press true play tune in. And this is basically gonna start the process. TruePlay makes use of your phone's microphones to tailor your Sonos soundbar's audio output for your room's exact composition. Yes, you may look a little bit silly waving your phone around the room, but trust us for what you get in return in terms of sound performance, it's definitely worth it. We also recommend rerunning TruePlay every six months or so as changes to your room, such as furniture being moved around, can massively impact performance. Next up are two great features that I find myself using a lot. There's nothing worse than having to constantly adjust the film's volume because it's late at night and the explosions are too loud and the vocals are too quiet. Enter these two features, speech enhancement and night mode. Speech enhancement makes dialogue easier to hear and follow and night mode reduces the intensity of loud sounds from your Sonos soundbar and increases the volume of quieter sounds to keep everything clear without having to adjust the volume. So to turn speech enhancement mode on and night mode for that matter, then the first thing you need to do is make sure your TV is on and ensure that TV audio is playing through your Sonos soundbar. Now, next thing you're gonna do is open up the Sonos app like we've done here and you'll see at the bottom of the screen, we've got the current system set up that our uh, TV audio is playing through. So we're gonna tap that and then you'll notice at the bottom that we've got two icons. So we've got night mode, which is the moon, and we've got speech enhancement, which is the little text box. So night mode is currently now off, but if you tap it to turn it on, it will tell you that lower volumes, quieter sounds will be enhanced and louder sounds will be suppressed. And then also you've got speech enhancement mode. So if you tap that, it just tells you that speech enhancement is on. Did you know that you can actually adjust your soundbar's height channels in the Sonos app? Now, this one is only for those of you who have a Sonos Beam Gen 2 or Sonos Arc, so sorry, Ray users, you can use the chapters below to skip this one, but as both the Arc and Beam are Dolby Atmos enabled soundbars, they can recreate 3D audio, but in slightly different ways. So the Sonos Arc delivers height channels using dedicated up-firing drivers, whilst the Sonos Beam Gen 2 simulates height channels using psychoacoustics. If you want to find out more on this, then we've got plenty of video content going into way more depth, so we'll link them below for you guys. If you want to adjust them, the first thing you need to do is head back down to the settings in the bottom right, and then click system and find your desired system. Then we want to navigate down until we find the sound option, and you should see height audio. So we're going to tap on that. And then you can see that we've got an adjustable slider where we can adjust the height channel audio. So you can play around with that and find the desired setting to suit your listening preferences. Keep moving, Ray users. We'll catch you in the next tip, we promise. 
Now the Sonos Beam Gen 2 and Sonos Arc sound great with all content, but they really come alive when you're watching Dolby Atmos content. So you'll want to check that you're accessing Atmos if your setup is compatible. For those not 100% sure, Dolby Atmos is a format that enables sound to be heard three-dimensionally. So it sounds like sound is coming from all around you. For example, if a helicopter flies overhead in a scene, you'll hear it travel overhead. So you guys join me back in our Sonos Arc Lounge and I'm gonna talk you through the number of different steps you need to follow to ensure that you're getting Dolby Atmos content on either your Sonos Arc soundbar or your Sonos Beam. Now, the first thing that you need to do is make sure that your TV is capable of playing Atmos content. Now, there is a number of ways you can do this. You can either check the spec list that came with your TV or a quick Google search and you should be able to find that out. Now, it is a really important point to mention as well, guys, that anything that also touches your audio, so maybe an Apple TV or a Blu-ray player is also able to pass Atmos content along. So the next thing that you need to do is make sure you've got the connection set up properly. So the Sonos Arc and the Sonos Beam are both supplied with a HDMI cable and you need to connect this obviously to the back of your soundbar and then into your TV either via the Arc or eARC port. So the next thing you need to do is make sure that the apps that you use to stream your content on, so like Netflix, for example, like we've got here or Disney Plus, make sure that they're actually capable of supporting Atmos content on your TV. And finally, you need to check your content. So any content you watch must have Atmos audio in a supported codec. So Dolby Digital Plus, Dolby True HD or Dolby MAT. Okay, welcome back Ray users. Back to upgrades for all three soundbars then. And did you know that you can adjust the bass, treble and loudness of your Sonos soundbar? So to adjust the EQ settings on an iOS device or Android, simply open the Sonos app like we've just done, head back down to the settings in the bottom right hand corner and select system. You then wanna scroll down, find your desired system. So that's this one here for us. And then you wanna scroll down again until you find the section sound and then you wanna hit on EQ. So we're gonna tap that and then you can see we can make adjustments to not only the treble slider but also to the bass as well. So you can play around with these until you've got a setup that works for you. Here's one for those of you with kids or if you're using your soundbar in a commercial space. Have you ever wanted to set a maximum volume for your Sonos soundbar? Well, you can do so by using the volume limit to apply a limit on the scale from zero to 100. The now playing screen will still show a full volume slider, but will adjust to the limit that you've set. But just be aware that volume limits will also apply to alarms and line in autoplay as well. So to set a volume limit on your device, simply open the Sonos app, head back down to settings and the bottom right and set system. Again, find your desired system and then you wanna head down to sound and then you wanna hit this here. So it says volume limit. Now currently that's off, but we can now adjust that to whatever our desired preference is. You might have noticed that these soundbars have a little status light here, and this indicates when you're connected to Wi-Fi, when the volume is muted, or if there are any signal errors. But you might find the status light distracting while watching in low light. Now, all three soundbars also offer touch controls on the top, which is great for quick control, but you might find that young children can cause absolute chaos when they end up pausing your music mid-flow with the touch control. So, the good news is you can disable both the status light and the touch controls on your Sonos soundbar with these easy steps. So once you've chose your particular product, you can scroll down, go past these sections here, and then you'll see underneath hardware, you've got status light and touch control. So they're both currently on at the moment, but you can simply tap on those sliders there and that will turn them off. Sonos soundbars can be further enhanced with their placement. If you have a TV stand, you might opt to place your soundbar on top, but alternatively, you could add a compatible accessory to fit to your setup. So if you have rears in a home cinema setup, you might also want to grab a pair of floor stands to place your speakers at the optimal listening height. Now there's a huge range of Sonos accessories from Sonos, Mountson, Flexen, and more. And if you hit the link in the description below, you can check out the ones that we stock on our website. So for optimal sound performance for both the Sonos Beam and the Sonos Ray, you wanna make sure that if wall mounting, you leave at least one inch worth of space below the TV, so you've got access to your touch controls, and also at least a foot either side from any obstructing walls or objects for best sound performance. And for the Sonos Arc, you want to leave at least four inches because of the upwards firing drivers between the TV 
and the arc. And then you also, again, like the Sonos Beam and the Ray, you want to leave at least one foot of space either side from any walls for optimal sound performance. Arguably one of the best things about Sonos is the ability to expand your setup with ease. Now we know that Sonos soundbars sound great on their own, but for that extra level of immersion, you have got the option of adding a Sonos sub or surround sound rears. Adding a Sonos subwoofer is a great way of leveling up your audio performance for TV, music, and gaming by adding extra bass to your setup. Now Sonos have two subwoofer options currently, the Sonos Sub Gen 3, and the Sonos Sub Mini. Now adding a Sonos Sub will also enhance the performance of your paired soundbar. By taking the load of the lower frequencies, connecting the Sonos Sub frees up processing power for the connected Sonos soundbar to deliver enhanced performance on the other arrays. So when it comes to adding a sub to your Sonos setup, if you'd like some more information about the Sonos Sub Gen 3 or the Sub Mini, then we have done a dedicated video on exactly that which we've left linked in the description below. But I'll run through a couple of the key need to knows about each Sonos subwoofer. So the Sonos Sub Gen 3 is better suited to medium to large spaces, it offers very powerful bass, it goes to very high volume levels and can be positioned both vertically or horizontally. And you can also use this in a dual Sonos Sub Gen 3 setup. Now the benefits of the Sonos Sub Mini is that it's better suited for small to medium spaces as it offers that compact form factor, but still punchy bass. And the other thing that I just want to mention very quickly is the Sonos Sub Mini has to be positioned vertically. So unlike the Sub Gen 3, it could also be laid flat. This has to stay like it is here, positioned upright. And the other thing to mention is that unlike the Sonos Sub Gen 3, you can only have one Sonos Sub Mini in your setup. If you're looking to add heightened immersion to your setup, then adding a pair of Sonos speakers as rear surround sounds will enhance performance and place you in the center of the action. We generally recommend a pair of Sonos One Gen 2 speakers to connect to a Sonos Ray if you're looking to add voice control capability to your setup. Now, if you already have voice capability from your Sonos Beam Gen 2 or Sonos Arc, we suggest adding a pair of Sonos One SL rear surrounds, which at a lower price point are the perfect pairing. So we've covered using your soundbar in a home cinema setup with rears or a sub or both, but you can also group your audio with any other Sonos speakers you might have around your home. Now you might be thinking, why would I want to do that? And there are two reasons I can think of. So number one, you're having a party and you've got music playing on your Sonos soundbar and have a Sonos one maybe in your kitchen and you want the same audio playing throughout. Or number two, as your Sonos soundbar is connected to your TV, you can also share TV audio to any other Sonos speaker, whether that be the news, MTV, yes, that still exists, but my favorite way of using this feature is say you have some sport on in the lounge, but it's a nice sunny day, so you could group the audio to one of your Sonos portable speakers and then listen to the game out in the garden. So to add a speaker to an existing Sonos setup, the first thing you need to do is head to the middle tab here, which is the system tab, and then scroll down until you find your designated setup. So for us, for example, we're in the Sonos Art Lounge, so this is our setup here. Then you wanna hit this icon, and this will bring up all of these Sonos speakers currently on your Wi-Fi. So what we wanna do is add our Sonos Roam SL into this Sonos setup currently here in the Arc Lounge. So we're gonna tap on the Sonos Roam SL, we're gonna hit done, and then you can see that this has now become the Sonos Arc Lounge and the outdoor Sonos Roam SL. One additional tip is if you tap and hold the touch controls on the Move, for example, it will cycle through any audio playing on different speakers or soundbars throughout your house to group with. So you can skip the app altogether. Now, one tip we didn't cover today was setting up a voice assistant, but you've got the option to add voice control via Amazon. Google Assistant, Sonos Voice, and Siri. Now with the Beam and the Arc, you've got inbuilt mics, and with the Ray, you can simply use a compatible device such as an Amazon Echo Dot or Google Nest Mini. So hopefully that's given you guys some things to try out with your Sonos soundbar. What was your favorite tip? Let me know down in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe while you're down there for more Sonos-related content. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.